Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. If you were around last week, you saw how I was planning to go into our first week of homeschooling ever. Uh, my kindergartner, I've got a five-year-old girl, two and a half-year-old boy. Well, he's almost three. And um, last week was, was supposed to be, it was our first week of homeschooling. Um, I, you know, I have some things to say about that, which uh, I'm going to say at the end of our video, um, because what I really wanted to share with you guys this week was our unit study. Um, but yeah, I got to say, um, a lot of things uh, went out the door after our first week, and I'm excited to kind of share where we're headed. So before we get to that, I am excited to share with you our amazing body unit study. So I've had this up for a couple of weeks now, and um, I didn't have like a lot of plans for it. I knew it was just going to be sort of like this extra fun addition to um, our other lesson plans and um, a great opportunity for uh, self-directed learning and a great opportunity to use our Montessori shelf. Okay, I just realized that my glasses were like reflecting crazy um, so that you couldn't see my face. I, oh man, I'm just like a mess today. <laughs> it's Labor Day. My husband took the kids to the pool for the last day that the pool is open. Um, so I have like very little time to do this and I just figured I gotta go for it. Got my hair in the top knot. Um, yeah, it's been a day and it's hot. We're not used to hot weather uh, here, here where we live. But anyway, I think I'm getting a cold. <sighs> We're, I'm, I'm just gonna go for it. We're gonna talk about the unit study. Um, okay, so because my kids are so young, obviously this was just like a, a, a fun idea, a fun, um, you know, opportunity to introduce more books and more crafts um, and a little bit of hands-on play. So I wanted to show you what I chose for this unit study, what worked uh, really great, what books they liked and what they just, we're not into. Maybe they're too young. Maybe they're just not the right kind of kid. I know, you know, my daughter loves gymnastics, rope swing, friends. She's not a real sit down kind of gal. Um, doesn't really get into crafts and things like that. But uh, anyway, I still try. So let me show you what I did here. Um, this chalkboard paint I got from Amazon was really great. It actually only took like one coat. Um, and then I got these soft pastels also from Amazon. I'll link these, you know, I am, I kind of, I was hoping that they would be a little bit softer to work with, but they're actually just kind of like chalk. And the reason I wanted softer was so they wouldn't break so easily and they might look a little bit, um, nicer going on the wall, but, um, you know, that's okay. They still worked out well. You get a ton of colors. I found a couple of cute things on Angela Brandeff's uh, human body episode, which her, her human body unit study episode on her YouTube channel. So I'm going to link that because I really got a lot out of that. Um, one thing I really got was this cute recipe of what makes up a human body. You know, how many bones, how many muscles, how many hairs. So I thought that was pretty cute. I uh, found some printouts of organs uh, online and I cut those out, put them up on the wall. We definitely referenced these through a lot of the books that we've been reading and activities. So those have worked out great. Um, they love the skeleton I drew. So I think the chalkboard wall, you know, I think it's good. I, th I think it worked out okay. In terms of the monastery shelf, this actually went over better than I thought it would. You know, my daughter is very active. Like I said, she's not really one to want to sit down with activities and crafts. Um, I mean, she will, but not for very long. So she's just more about where are we going? What are we doing? Who are we going to see? So I was pleased that she did show um, quite a bit of interest in this. And when we started our, our, our school week last week, she assumed it would be more about this and less about um, some of like the, the workbook stuff. Um, so that was enlightening to me. Um, what's some fun stuff? So we used our library as a major resource. The magical school, or I'm sorry, the magic school bus has at least three 
books about the human body and you know these stories are really fun it's about how the school bus goes inside the human body to understand more about germs and sickness the five senses um how we digest food so those are really key and i gotta say we didn't even really touch on the more body body books like anatomy books like these they haven't really shown a whole lot of interest in reading these. They're all about the magic school bus. So I would say the thing that they probably loved the most was the, the little anatomy guy. Um, I don't exactly know what this was called when I bought it, but I will link it. Um, again, I got it on Amazon. So he came with a bunch of little organs inside of him and they are super squishy and like a total dream for kids. He's got his intestines and his stomach and his pancreas, here's his stomach and his liver. And that, okay, but here's the deal though. When you have like super little ones, my son, they're so stretchy and so gooey and fun that they really easily come apart. Um, so some things broke for sure. <laughs> but that's all right. They really loved it. Um, this guy comes with some fun little like tools to poke around and put them all back together. Um, this whole thing comes off so you can take out every single bone and muscle and um, try to put it back together. So this is great. I'm really happy with this purchase. Really cute. Uh, this one we got from our library. Butts are everywhere. My kids are almost three and five. Everything is about butts, it seems, and they just think it's hilarious. So this was a great one. Um, um, this book was cute. This was this was fun to, for me to read, so I kind of got a lot out of it. Um, this one we have yet to go through. Uh, it's called Grow, but it looks really cute. We're gonna hit this one soon. And then the rest of what I wanted to show you were basically like DIY little like anatomy activities that I found online um, and came up with. So one of these being, and I'll, I'll definitely link a few of these. If, I, if there's anything I didn't link that you would like the link to, please leave it in the comments box. Fingerprint counting. This was fun because she got an opportunity to use the ink and to see how um, there's all these little lines in her fingerprints. And then we talked a little bit about how that differentiates everyone from each other. I haven't done this activity yet, but this is learning about the five senses. It's a little printable um, coloring book with um, word tracing on it. Like a put together your own skeleton an anatomy puzzle. So you just like get all the printables online, cut them out. Where's my skeleton? And then it like, you know, has like this sort of a life-size skeleton that you can put together and then try to match where the organs go. Maybe for some kids, not so much for mine. Um, this went over really well. My daughter really liked this. Um, five senses matching board. So I, again, another free printable. Um, you would have to cut all of these out. I did use cardstock to print them so that they're a little bit thicker and more durable. Um, but yeah, so they, you know, they pick up a little ice cream cone and then they have to decide under which sense it matches. So my daughter really liked that. Like such a great opportunity to color too, which she has yet to take. Um, this was cute. I feel like my son liked this one a little bit more. Um, so this is like a paper doll activity. Again, like this was a lot of cutting and I'll say it didn't get played with enough to be worth it, but here's your skeleton guy. And then it comes with a lot of fun little cutout, um, outfits to put on him. And again, another opportunity to color. I swear though, my kids would rather just be rolling around in the mud than pick up a marker. Uh, let's see, this I was like so excited. I thought this was gonna go over great because the whole concept of taking pictures of the inside of your body, 
maybe she's just still a little too young. But I, um, I already had some vellum paper, but that's really what you need for this craft. But this was a free printable online. And if you print it on vellum, then it looks like an x-ray. And if you just like, you don't even need a light box. You would just like hold it up to, you know, like the window. And then it comes with the matching body part. So like, here's the chest, here's the chest x-ray. And if you, you know, like held it up to the light, you could see like the chest behind it. Um, she she kind of got a kick out of like the dog, you know? She's like, this is what our dog looks like on the inside. And then this would be the matching and then you put it up to the light, hold it up and kind of cool, you know? The, the beauty of this kind of curriculum is that I can like save all of these projects and kind of put together um, like a kit that is the human body unit study and we will come back to it, you know, because her questions about the hum human body are only going to continue and um, her curiosity. So I really look forward to revisiting it and having all of those resources already finished. Um, I did go ahead and print out a bunch of these little like flashcards um, that I printed on cardstock so that they would last longer. So just a good resource, you know, she didn't show much interest in these. <laughs> One day. And then this thing actually, she really loved. Um, it's a five senses sorting basket. So you would like go through and just like, you know, smell it, feel it, um, hear it, uh, wear it, and then start to understand, you know, the five senses and which one of these things they fit. So she actually kind of liked this one a lot. And then I like got a little like perfume in here, you know, Play-Doh. Um, I had like some granola bars, got like a little book. So this seemed like more of an age appropriate activity. And then um, for each unit study, I'm always gonna leave up our little box of letters. I got these at Michael's for $11. Um, they, they're great, they come with like at least a half a dozen of each letter. The only thing I'll say that I don't like is that they don't have the lowercase ones and um, right now that's kind of what I wanna focus on, but I do like that these are there on the shelf for them to explore and just play with and start get, um, gaining a little bit of letter recognition. So what I still want to try doing are some experiments. Um, uh, I did find some links to a, um, a stethoscope experiment um, to put together, which really didn't take much. It was like a balloon and a funnel, something else. Um, the lungs experiment where you use like a plastic bag and some straws to help them understand how our lungs inflate and deflate. Um, there was an experiment like a blood pumping experiment using a couple of mason jars and straws and balloons and some red food coloring. Um, we haven't gotten to the experiments yet, but I am planning on it. We have this week to kind of get through the rest of this unit study. I'm kind of putting aside like two to three weeks for each one. Um, and then we will start on our next one after that. So that's all I have for the human body unit study. Um, it, for being my first one, I think it, it went well and I'm excited to keep it going. I have decided after um, some enlightening truths about our first year, first week of homeschooling um, that I'm gonna let my daughter just choose the units from now on. Um, I really wanna go, yeah, these are just way too, they're just glaring way too much. I feel blind. Um, I'm just going to let my daughter, um, choose the unit studies moving forward. Next week, she really wants to do a fairy unit study. There is, um, obviously not a whole lot of information on fairies. Um, I, I looked, I really, I tried to even look up fairy unit study and there isn't a whole lot, but I feel like it's a great opportunity to just focus on, um, books and crafts. So that's kind of where we're going to go with that. We have a little fairy garden in town here where we live that's adorable. So obviously that's going to be um, a go-to field trip day. 
Um, and then I, you know, maybe I could also sprinkle in some like butterfly stuff too, some butterfly education. Oh my gosh, y'all, I am looking real tired. Um, all right, so a couple of things I just wanted to mention about how our first week of homeschooling went was, well, I, ha I have a confession. <laughs> For the last like year, um, I've been really inspired by and very interested in um, the self-led learning approach. Um, I think there are a lot of names out there for it. Maybe the one that is most known is unschooling. Um, and I, I, I prefer the name self-led. Um, but really what it is, is that you just allow your children to navigate their education. Um, and it sounded so radical at first when I knew that we would be homeschooling, I was like, uh, uh, that, that seems crazy coming from someone who spent their entire childhood in school. I was already scared enough to homeschool. That sounds real radical. And then I just, I, I tend to go down rabbit holes and I did, and I found so much wonderful um, information, resources. Um, really, I just feel like I gained such deep knowledge for this philosophy of learning. Um, and really though, what happened was my husband was not super comfortable with that idea. And we decided to take more of a classical approach to um, her kindergarten homeschool year. And that's kind of how we ended up with the, the, the binder and the worksheets and um, all of the materials that, that I purchased um, and all of these things that I've crafted. Um, probably because there was definitely some fear in me too that um, an unschooling approach was maybe just a little too radical for us. So let's just try to go normal at first, right? But when I sat down with my daughter and tried to do some of these more traditional um, lesson plans, it just, it was so clear to me how, how inauthentic it felt to me in my gut. I am not ever gonna judge how any parent decides to educate their children. I'm really not. I only know what feels right to me and, and to the, like, the essence of my children. I think too that I did a lot of reading, a lot of podcasts. I read a lot of Peter Gray and John Holt, um, who were were um, educators and philosophers on um, self led learning and homeschooling. My daughter fought the worksheets real hard, and I found myself using these, you know, um, kind of threats that just didn't feel right to me, you know? Like, we'll do this and then we can do other things, but if you don't finish these, then, you know, we can't we can't go anywhere, we can't see friends, we're not gonna do treats later. I hate the punishments and rewards. So I guess the moral of this is we still don't know what we're doing. Um, I'm just gonna keep moving forward with what's working. Um, our our play is, is working. Um, the unit study actually went fairly well. And the more research I've done on homeschool unit studies, the more I'm finding that a lot of families who follow the this, this self-led learning approach um, often do so through a unit study because you, there is so much opportunity to really tap into all those different subjects like math and art and science and geography. Um, and so, and you know, obviously reading and writing. So. I'm thinking that whatever kind of curriculum we're going to do, it's going to be based off based on some of those hands-on activities that I showed you guys last week. If she's showing an interest in learning her letters and reading and writing, um, the guess the animal game that I showed you guys last week, uh, she has been obsessed with, we are playing it every single day. And I am realizing she knows a lot more about animals than I realized that she did, than I knew she did. Um, and then the unit study thing I think is, is going, it's obviously a great opportunity to dive deeper into her interests. So I guess to wrap up this video, um, we are unschoolers this year. Yeah, I think that's, um, that's just the reality of how kindergarten's gonna go. 
So I would love to hear from you all. I would love to know how your experiences have gone with homeschooling kindergarten, if you really even tried at all, if it was mostly play-based, if anyone's um, used solely just like a unit study as their curriculum. Um, again, we're just rolling with it and we'll see what happens, but this is our plan now for this week and we'll see what happens next week. So thanks so much for being here. Please subscribe if you would like to know more about what we're doing. Um, please like this video if you got some fun human body unit study tips out of it. And I will see you guys next week. I almost forgot my little mom hack of the week that I'm gonna be sharing at the end of each episode. Um, this one I definitely stole from Pinterest, but it is really cute. You've got your alphabet with just a white crayon and some watercolors. So the only prep work with this is that you've got to, as the mom, take the white crayon. As you can see, this is my trial one. You write the alphabet with the white crayon and it is semi-invisible, so it's a little hard to see. But I did this both in uppercase and lowercase and uh, get all your letters in there. And then you hand this over to your kids as essentially a blank canvas and have them reveal the magical white letter with watercolor paint. And I thought this was really cute. We have these hanging up in our uh, homeschool room now. Great idea for a reading and art lesson in one.